This morning, if you will, I would that you would, on your devices, turn with me to the scriptures. The Old Testament, Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. If you will stand, if you can stand. These are the words that are written. For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. This is the reading of the word for those who have heard. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For a few moments, saints, Jeremiah was an Old Testament prophet, one of many whom God used to speak to his chosen people, the Israelites. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Micah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk. These were also prophets that the God, God used to speak to his chosen children. But the message God want those who have an ear to hear this morning has been taken from the prophet Jeremiah in this 29th chapter in the form of a letter that God told Jeremiah to send to those Jews who find themselves in captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar. And in order that you may understand and gain a clearer understanding of the verses that I have read for you, I would that you would read Deuteronomy chapter 28, 29, and 30. King Nebuchadnezzar has conquered Jerusalem, and he has taken some captives, <clears throat> excuse me, but there were some who were left behind in Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was one of them to remain in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, a place where the Jews had sanctuary. Jerusalem was a place where they were familiar with. Yes. Jerusalem was where God had placed them. But now, God has allowed them to be taken captive to Babylon. He has allowed them to be taken captive because of their disobedience to his word. Jerusalem. But we know, and you and I know, that as we continue to read the text, God has a plan. As you continue to read the text, you will discover that God has a plan. We come to the conclusion that God has a plan because otherwise, why would he instruct Jeremiah to write a letter and send it to the captives. I want to remind you this morning, my brothers and sisters, that life presents challenges for all of us. All of a sudden, they were in Jerusalem. They were in a familiar place, familiar customs. But now, they're in captivity in Babylon. All of a sudden, something has happened. Something is happening. And something will happen to you and I. For them, this was a game changer. You can fill in the blanks. That which was on yesterday, today is no longer. The car that you had might have been repossessed. The house that you live in, flood or fire, may have damaged it. Your health may be failing today. The friends that you had yesterday may abandon you tomorrow. The job that you had, you might have been laid off. 
relationships stranded and strained. But I want to remind you this morning that God has a plan for your life. A familiar saying that uh, we used to hear, I used to hear some time ago, and maybe you did too, we would say, I didn't see that coming. You all have seen and read in the scriptures. You've heard it preached by our pastor and others. This familiar chapter of Matthew's Gospel 24, 42 and 43, where he says, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in which watch the thief would come, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You remember of Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. They didn't see it coming. It is not given to us what God has in store. But what we do know, God has a plan for your life. Those that were in Jerusalem, they said, I have been uprooted from my homeland. I have been brought to a strange place. Everything here in Babylon is unfamiliar. The language, the custom, the people, the prophet himself, Jeremiah, who sent this letter to those in Babylon, was safely still in Jerusalem. And I, I can hear those in Babylon saying, why do we need a letter? Well, I'm glad you asked why they needed a letter. God had asked Jeremiah to send the letter to those in captivity because he had a plan for their lives. They were in a land that was strange and unfamiliar. The customs were unfamiliar. The people were unfamiliar. Can you hear them lamenting their fears, their apprehensions, and their anxieties, knowing what their future may not be and what may become of them? But what we do know, unlike those Jews who found themselves in Babylonian captivity, that he may not show up when you want him. He may not come when you call. But I declare to you this morning that you keep your hearts and minds stayed on Jesus. He will present himself to you, his all and all. Can I get a witness this morning? God has a plan for your life. Those that were in captivity, they didn't know what the letter contained. They didn't know what it would be the letter's content. But I could hear them say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. And can't nobody do, do me like the Lord. You read what he did for Martha and Mary. You read uh, what he did for Paul and Silas. You know that God is able to do all things but fail. Can I get a witness this morning? You heard uh, that God healed the 10 leopards. Uh, he stopped that funeral procession for the widow who was in Nain, who was on her way to bury her only son. The Germans said that since then leaving, there are situations in your life that will challenge you from time to time. Don't give up on God because he has not given up on you. God knew why the Israelites were in Babylonian captivity. Yes, he did. Uh, he had instructed, he had instructed Jeremiah to send the letter because he has a plan. And, and he wanted saints to demonstrate in this letter his message to those who were in captivity. For I thought this morning, my brothers and sisters, I would that you would listen to the thought, the title, the hands of God are in the plans of God. His hand is in his plan and his plan is in his hand. Can I say that again? The hands of God are in the plans of God. His hand is in his plan and his plan is in his hand. God could have chosen a more perfect example 
than the scriptures we find in Jeremiah chapters 1, verses 4 and 5. In the verse, uh, Jeremiah declares, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I form you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Yeah, yeah. He said to Jeremiah, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. You can read it for yourselves, saints. God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, even before you were born. Saints, God has a plan for your life. Some of you here this morning, those of you who may be live streaming, you may be saying to yourselves, God was not talking to me. Hmm. Well, let me, let me help you with that. When you think that God was not talking to you when he was talking to Jeremiah, that he knew him before he formed him, before he was born, let me turn your attention briefly to uh, that letter written by Paul to the church in Rome, that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead. At that moment, you became what God knew you would become before he formed you in the womb. At that moment, you became what God knew you would become before you were even born. You became what God wanted you to be when he set you aside as a disciple for his son, Christ Jesus. And all because God has a plan and God's plans are in his hands. The scriptures does not tell us how long uh, it took the letters to reach uh, those in Babylonian captivity, but the scriptures, it seems to have been what the Jews needed to hear. And because God's hands were in his plans, and his plan was in his hand, they received the message with joy and jubilation. Does anybody know that tis so sweet to trust in Jesus? Tis so sweet to take him at his word. Do you know that just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. It was not just any letter. It was indeed a letter from the prophet Jeremiah, but more than that, it was a message from God. God does not send idle messages. Everything he does has a purpose and a meaning. Amen. Although they were in captivity, remember, they were a covenant people. They were not allowed uh, to enter into any relationship with any, anyone outside of the covenant relationships. And as a matter of fact, it was a violation of law and punishable, in some cases, to be stoned to death. But here in the text, God's message to them was build houses. Settle down, plant gardens, and eat what the gardens produce. God has a plan because he has not forgotten about those in captivity. He will not forsake his people. Though you might be constrained, know that God can unloose your shackles. Though you might be constricted, remember what he did for Paul and Silas. But God can open doors that no man can close. If you're confined, remember, Joseph was sold into Egypt slavery, but his brothers meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And you remember the story, Bible readers, those who, when Joseph went to Egypt, he was thrown in jail because he refused to be seduced by the king's wife, but God delivered him through it all. Why? You already know why, because God has a plan. God's message to the captives was full of hope. Through their situation, it looked hopeless. In his message, that letter that God sent by Jeremiah told them while they were in captivity, marry, have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give daughters in marriages so that they too may have sons and daughters and increase in numbers while they were in captivity. Whether you are restricted, restrained, you know that God can make a way. That letter that was sent to Babylon instructed them to build houses, to marry. Though they were in a strange place, Deacon Dolman, 
God has a message. And as long as you're in captivity, seek the peace of the city, he told them. Seek the peace of the city. And you would wonder why God would ask them, those that are in captivity, those that are in a strange land, those that are in unfamiliar places, why would he tell them to seek the peace of the city? Marry, give in marriage. Because God has a plan. Because when you think about it, when the city is peaceful, when there is economic growth, is flourishing. When the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQs are up and prospering, so will you. I know some of you had that 501k and it devastated you. But Dick and Scott, God has a plan. He has a plan for your life. Because when the city is peaceful, you can prosper. Above all, while things are not going the way you would like them to go, where you want to live, when you don't have that, that condo, that co-op, that house with a white picket fence, that high-rise penthouse overlooking the Hudson, and you want to leave your Babylon and return to a place that is familiar, let me, let me remind you this morning, fret not, because the Lord God can bless you right where you are. Amen. I know I have a witness. He can bless you right where you are. Uh, he did it for the Jews who were in captivity. I can hear Sister James and others singing praises. The Lord is blessing me right now. Amen. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. And brothers and sisters, I hesitate to ask you, did the Lord wake you up this morning? Because if I did ask you the question and he didn't wake you up, you could not answer the question. The fact that you are sitting here clothed in your right mind. God woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. Don't be discouraged. Be not dismayed. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into your own understanding. Walk by faith and not by sight. You can't believe everything uh, that you see. You can't always make a right interpretation of the things you see. If you see me coming out of an ABC store, for some of you who do not know what an ABC store is, <laughs> wine and liquor, it does not mean that I'm an alcoholic because I'm coming out of the store. Don't believe everything you see. Trust in the Lord and lead not into your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And as it is today, there were deceivers in Jeremiah's time. You remember Hananiah? He was a false prophet. He was taken to Babylon, and he prophesied to the captives that they would return to Jerusalem in two years. Now, you remember in the New Testament, Jesus warned his disciples in Matthew's gospel to take heed that no man deceive you. He said, for many shall come in my name and would deceive many, saying that I am the Christ. Falsifying the truth of the word of God caused Hananiah to lose his life. Be not deceived, God is not marked. The letter that was sent to the captives, and I'm almost through, the letter that was sent to the captives contained the truth of God's word. And we know that God is not a man that he should lie. You'll find that in Numbers 23, 19. What he said he would do, he would keep his promises. When his word goes forth, it does not return to him void. It accomplishes what God has set for it to accomplish. God, in the letter that he directed Jeremiah to send to the Jews, he said in that letter, it will be 70 years before you will return to Jerusalem. God had a plan. And saints, let me say to you this morning, it is wise to humble yourselves concerning the will of God. It is the boundaries that God set that affects your life and your circumstances. Was it Noah who declared the ark's dimensions and his number of days upon the flood? Did Moses tell God how many years the children should wander in the wilderness? Did Joshua have a Zoom meeting with God and place on the agenda how many times they should march around the walls? God has a plan for your life. God could have increased the years that he had them to spend in captivity. 
He could decrease the years as well. Be thankful when he brings you to a situation and be thankful when he brings you through the situation. When a storm is raging in your life, don't tell God how great the raging is. Let the storm know how great your God is. Disobeying God has always been met with an unfavorable consequence. And because he is a just God, he blesses those whom he will bless, and he will curse those whom he will curse. He said that in his word. But yet still he has a plan for your life. He declares that those that are disobedient, like the Jews were in Jerusalem, they were taken under captivity because they had disobeyed the Lord. Remember, saints, God has a plan for your life, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your situation is. But thanks be unto God that those who were in Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar did not care anything about their future. Nebuchadnezzar cared nothing about their hopes and dreams. Nebuchadnezzar cared nothing about their aspirations. But I want to tell you this morning, saints, thanks be unto God that you and I have someone who cares about our future. You and I have someone who cares about our hopes and dreams. You and I have someone who cares about our aspirations, someone who cares about our well-being, someone who cares about the roof that he placed over your head. You and I have someone who cares if shoes are on our feet and clothes are on our backs. You have someone who cares about your mental health. Reverend Swinton, we have someone who cares about our spiritual well-being and our past and leadership, Dr. Verlin D. Williams. We have someone who cares that our lives do matter. Here in chapter 29, God revealed to those in Babylon. He said to him, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And when you call upon me, I will answer you. I will be your God and you will be my people. I want to know this morning, have, have you tried him? I want to know this morning, have you, have you anyone called on him? Did he answer you, your prayers? The Bible declares, wait, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. Have you tried him? Captivity came upon the Jews in Jerusalem because they would not listen to God. They would not listen to that ordained prophet, Jeremiah. They would not listen to the one that God had placed in their midst. God ordained Jeremiah and set him apart. He said before he was born, but here is the theme and the crux of the matter. God put his spirit from the beginning in Jeremiah because the hands of God were in the plans of God to will and to do his good pleasure. Jeremiah was selected to be an ordained prophet. Even before he was born, God put his spirit in him. Remember, the hands of God are in the plans of God. That which was true for Jeremiah is true also for you. He has a plan for you, saints. Keep your hand in God's hand because he knows what's best for you. God knows everything about you. Before you were born in the womb, he purposed your life and caused it to be. John's gospel declared that there was nothing made that was made. There was nothing created that was created without the hands of God. Jeremiah's call was not left up to Jeremiah. And here, saints, I want you to listen to me closely. Jeremiah's plan for his life was not in his hand. It was not left up to him. He could only do what God had called him to be and do, and do what he was commissioned by God. Many of you might have an issue with that, and you will make references to 
man having a free will. Bear in mind that the scriptures themselves will testify to the truth. You remember in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth according to scripture? If you believe that, and I know you do, you cannot deny that his hands was not in his plans to create the heavens and the earth. The hands of God has always been in his plan. Jeremiah, the Old Testament prophet, was able to carry out this assignment because he was empowered by the Spirit of God, as was others in the Bible. In the New Testament, Jesus told his disciples that he said, I am the vine and you are the branches, and without me you can do nothing. The Lord God confirms his word and his works to the faithful as he continues to carry out his plan. In the Old Testament, the Spirit acted in a free, sovereign way, coming among men and beasts as it will. And this very same spirit that was present in Jeremiah showed up and showed out in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, which had been predicted in the book of Jeremiah. God had a plan, and he still has a plan, that he would show up as a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. When you look at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, this supports the sound. It said from heaven as that of a rushing mighty wind filling the house of those who were there. God's plan in the Old Testament fulfilled itself in the New yes. Testament in the book of Acts. That spirit that he placed in Jeremiah was the same spirit that came on the day of Pentecost. God's plan is always in his hand. Saints, you have heard a word and a message that was given to me to give to you and it's redundant in terms of his plan is in his hands. You and I, we sit here today because God has planned this day. As Brother Max said earlier, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be in it. His plan is always in his hands. And here is the conclusion. So I ask you today, people of God, those that are called by his name, if you had a choice, would you choose that giant conglomerate, the one where many are insured and many are assured, that giant conglomerate that says you are in good hands? <laughs> or would you choose the one that the songwriter declared, he's got the whole world in his hands? Those uh, who went to Calvary, he who went to Calvary, hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. But early, early, early Sunday morning, Amen. that same one got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Letting the world know that it was from the beginning, the hands of God are in the plans of God, and the plans of God are in the hands of God. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope. Is anyone in here this morning have hope? To give you a future. That plan that God had for you, that plan included the free gift of salvation. That's the plan that God has for you and I. If you're born again, God has the plan of salvation for you, the gift of salvation. The free gift, that free will, that some of you talk about and we talk about, is God's granting you an opportunity on your own accord to either freely accept him or freely reject him. That's the free will that you have. You can freely accept him or you can freely reject him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His plan is in his hand and his hand is in his plan. God bless you and God keep you. <laughs>